If you make music on a computer, then you need the power of MIDI controls. And even something as simple as this can make your experience and your music so much better. The challenge with something like this isn't so much the expense or even technically knowing what to do with it, but simply choosing out of all the different options available what you want it to do. So in this video, we're going to give you some ideas for how you can put a MIDI controller like this to work for you. Hi everyone, my name is Peter and thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound, where we're working to make worship keyboard technique and technology easier. When I play keys, I get most of my sounds through my Mac running main stage software, but it would be a much less satisf satisfying experience if I was always having to reach for the computer and do things on the computer while I was trying to make music. And so that's where something like this, a simple MIDI controller becomes so helpful. Uh, this is an Akai LPD-8. Um, and be sure to stay tuned at the end of this video uh, where you can get a free download of a main stage template that's based around this guy. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to set it up, but mostly we're going to be talking about the biggest challenge, which is weeding through all the options that you have available for this thing to do and making something that works for you. Uh, first of all, let's look at the knobs. Uh, or instead of knobs on your controller, you might have faders, vertical uh, slider type things. Um, they function in the same way as knobs. Whether you have knobs or faders, they function in the same way. Um, your computer doesn't know the difference, uh, and that's because they send the same sort of MIDI information, which is called CC, or Continuous Controller Data. And these types of controls are good for controlling anything in your software that goes in a circle function or it goes in an up and down function. Uh, we're going to talk about some of these different options, but anything that uh, you look in your software and it's a, it's a knob type thing or it's a vertical type thing, uh, your knobs or faders on your MIDI controller will work for that. The first thing that you'll want to do with your faders or your knobs is control volume. And that's probably one of the biggest functions and your responsibilities as a keyboard player is to manage the volume of your sound. So here's how you're going to do this in main stage. With the recreated version of your controller all assigned in the layout, we're going to go to edit mode and then select the patch from the list. From there, we're going to select the knob that we want to use to control the volume, then click Mac parameter, and then the volume fader for that sound. Now when we play, it's easy to control the volume of that sound with a simple knob. You can repeat this process if you have sounds with multiple layers on them. And here's how I set that up. I have a top row of, of knobs and a bottom row, and so if I have different layers set up, I will reserve the top row of knobs to control the volumes of the different sounds. And I reserve the lower row of knobs for controlling other parameters on, that, on those sounds. There are two other parameters that I typically assign to knobs. Okay, uh, One is I will assign a knob to control um, keyboard type sounds, I will often put a, a reverb or delay on them, or sometimes both. Um, so if I solo this piano sound, I'm going to turn the effects all the way down with the knob, and then I can turn them back up. So it's easy to control the level of the effects with a knob. For synth type sounds, I typically assign what's called a filter sweep. So on this pad sound, This knob is set up to control the low cut filter or the cutoff filter, which provides for some pretty dynamic changes as we go through the song. So to recap for knobs or faders, there are three things you want to control, the volume, um, effects levels, and filter sweeps. Uh, and having a consistent setup like top row for volume, bottom row for um, other parameters means that when you want to change your sound, you know exactly which knob to reach for. Now pads on a MIDI controller have more possibilities and your MIDI controller likely came with some editing software um, like for this uh, LPD-8 we have this editor and you can see um, there's some different options for the pads. I always use the pads in what's called uh, the note uh, mode and in other words there's they're sending a specific note value to the computer just like a key on my keyboard it said like G sharp 3 or C4 or something along those lines. And so they can be used to play sounds, pads can, uh, but they can also be used uh, really powerfully to uh, start any action that you want in your software. So pretty much anything that you want to be able to do or to start in your software, you can assign a pad to do it. So here's what I use pads for. First of all, for pad or for patch changes, I will assign these left two uh, pads on my setup to move up and down my patch list. 
and that's really handy because I don't have to go again to my computer to do that. Um, and, and let me also say that these are all being assigned at what's called the concert level. So anything I assigned at this level will affect um, every patch in the list. Okay, from there, I also have a button that tells MainStage what tempo the song I'm playing is at. So if I go to piano sound, let's hear the delay effect. Dun, dun, dun. I can slow it down by tapping the tempo here. And now you hear that the delay is slower. So any time-based effect like delays or arpeggiators will match the tempo that I tap in there. The other thing that I assign uh, on the pads is what's called a panic button. And sometimes your MIDI sounds can get stuck. And in, at that point, you can have a panic button, which will stop and reset everything so you can move on with your performance. Some other useful actions might be starting and stopping a backing track, uh, muting a channel strip, or even changing the speed of a rotary speaker, like a, a Leslie simulation on a B3 organ type of sound. Now I'm going to do a quick demonstration that will, sh will show me uh, using uh, a lot of these different parameters with the knobs and the pads. And if you want to get a head start on using this sort of controller with MainStage, uh, you can click on the link that's appearing here in the upper right-hand corner and go to the blog post for this video. And there, there's a form that you can download a free MainStage 3 template um, that has this sort of controller already created for you. Um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below or uh, click the thumbs up on this video if you like. Um, also, uh, click the subscribe button so you'll be uh, aware of uh, future videos as they come out. And also watch for the end of this video. There'll be a link to a related video on how you can put MainStage uh, to work for you and create some amazing keyboard sounds. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.